In this video, we travel to Portugal's extremely beautiful capital to see what there is to do here and how to spend three days in Lisbon. All right, so this is our first day in Lisbon, and this morning we're out exploring the Alfama neighborhood, which is famous for these beautiful tile buildings, as well as being one of the oldest neighborhoods here in Lisbon. And that's because in the 1755 earthquake that destroyed a lot of the city, this neighborhood was mostly spared. That's why you get these historic buildings that have lasted the test of time, as well as all these beautiful Azulejo tiles. The second thing we're doing today here in the Alfama neighborhood is visiting the Castelo de San Jorge. Now, I might have that wrong, but it's the castle of St. George. The ruins here go all the way back to the seventh century, but the castle itself goes back to the 11th century when it was first built by the Moors who lived here in Portugal. Today, you can pay 15 euros to get in for an adult and just explore the whole castle. Walking around and exploring some of these castles where we can just walk around is one of our favorite things to do when traveling in Europe. Now the castle itself does get pretty crowded with tourists, especially during the middle of the day. So it's best to come, I would suggest in the morning. When we came there were a ton of people, but it's worth it to come because you get some of the best views you can of all of Lisbon. We worked up quite the appetite exploring the castle, but all of our Lisbon food tour is in another video. So be sure to check out that one for what to eat when you're in Lisbon. One thing to know about Lisbon when you're visiting is that it's actually built on seven hills. So it's very hilly when you're here. We're currently heading up one. So we're trying to catch our breath. We can definitely feel it. This one is on stairs, but there are others that are just really steep streets. Um, with cobblestones or different things, so it's not always the easiest to walk on, but it's definitely something to keep in mind when you're visiting Lisbon, especially if, I don't know, I guess you're not too keen on walking. <laughs> okay, so we are staying at the Quinta Colina by Chiadu. It's like a boutique hotel that used to be a monastery. From the church that's right across the street. Mm -hmm and it's a really nice hotel. There's beautiful tile work even inside of our room and there's fantastic views from the terrace up here. We got it on booking.com, so we recommend using it. We have the link in the bio down below. If you're ever staying in Lisbon, it's a wonderful place to stay. After a bit of rest at the hotel, we headed back down to Rocio, which is a center district in Lisbon, and to the Praça do Comercio, which is a main square right on the waterfront of the Tagus River. From there, it was time to check out the Lisbon Timeout Market. Now, this is the one food thing we'll mention in this video because, quite frankly, it was a dud. It's full of 36 restaurants and bars, but the food was a bit overpriced, and there are definitely better places to spend your time and eat at when visiting Lisbon. This is our second day here in Lisbon. We are starting off today in the center, and then we're going to head up to explore Barrio Alto. Bairro Alto is one of the most famous neighborhoods here in Lisbon, and like most, it's built up on a hill. You can take the famous Santa Justa elevator up, but their lines can get pretty long with tourists, and we read that the locals actually take a secret passage through H&M. As long as the store is open, you can take the escalator all the way up to the third floor and get off 
even though it doesn't quite get you all the way to the top. As with most places in Lisbon, another option is to take the tram up. Bairro Alto also gives you fantastic views of the city at its Miradouro. All right, so we've been walking around Bairro Alto, not in Barrio Alto. Yeah. My, yeah, oops. <laughs> Our phone was in Spanish, so kind of messed that one up. Yeah. So far about the Bairro, I don't know, there's a lot more bars as yeah. far as like late that, night bars. Yeah, a lot of signs that say like cocktails and like, you know, drinks that maybe you wouldn't uh, associate with Portugal, like, oh, margaritas and... Mojitos. Uh, mojitos, yeah. yeah. It seems like a good place to go out, maybe, but right now, not much is open around here. Yeah, it's Monday morning. I would say, judging by some of the trash on the street, there were a lot of people out last night. Just some plastic cups and that. It's not too dirty, um, but the city's still waking up. But it's a cool neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Might be fun to definitely check out at night if you're in Lisbon mm -hmm. and looking for a party. One thing I thought about this neighborhood was that we would see less tile work around because compared to Alfama, which we explored in day one, it was more destroyed during the earthquake of 1755. However, I would say there are close to just as many tiles or azulejos. We were on the search for something we spotted day one in Lisbon on the hillside of Bairro Alto. It appeared to be the ruins of a cathedral, and when we found it, that's exactly what it was. The Carmel Convent was destroyed in the infamous 1755 earthquake and is now used as an archaeological museum. However, the best part was right around the corner. This was that you could go up to the top of the Santa Justa elevator for free and get more incredible views of Lisbon. All these views of the city were something we could just not get enough of during our three days in Lisbon. From there, we headed back down the hill to the Chiado neighborhood to see the famous pink street that others recommended we see while visiting Lisbon. And while it might be Instagrammy and good for pictures, it was a pretty big letdown and something you could definitely skip when visiting Lisbon. Since we were down by the river on flat land, it was time to head out to the Belém district, which is just about a 30 minute tram ride away from the center of Lisbon. This is where they have the Jerónimos Monastery, Monument to Discoveries, and the Belém Tower. The Belém Tower behind us here, I think is really cool. It's where the explorers from Portugal left back in the 16th century. Just like this old, I don't know if Gothic would be the correct era, but that's what it reminds me of. Like it's just been out here forever and it's really historic and weathered by the river and kind of the weather off of the ocean where the monument to discoveries, it said it was built in the 1950s. So I don't know, that one seemed kind of a little bit weird to me mm -hmm. in comparison to this one. Yeah. So if you're gonna see one of them, go to the Bellum Tower. It's a little bit outside of the city, so you gotta take a tram to it. It's definitely not walkable, but the tram's only three euros a person each way. Yeah, we uh, had a little trouble with, uh, with the machine, but uh, we figured it out and um, it all worked out. Yeah, you can buy your tickets right on board. It's pretty easy, but it's kind of like a little mini day trip, I suppose, mm -hmm. outside of the center of Lisbon to see something else here in the city. Over here is where you can get the original Pasteche de Belém, which is the most famous dessert in all of Portugal. Back in Lisbon after sunset, we did some more exploring of the city, which of course meant walking up some more steep hills. So walking around the city at night, stopping at an awesome cocktail bar, as well as going to a mirador to end the night is a great way to end day two here in Lisbon.
On our third day in Lisbon, we got up bright and early to go visit Sintra. Unfortunately for you, this popular day trip is worthy of its own video, so make sure to subscribe so you won't miss it. However, here are some of the highlights. So that's gonna do it for the end of day three here in Lisbon. We went to Sintra, and when we got back to Lisbon, we headed to the hotel, slept a little bit, and then went out to dinner. Now we're headed back to the hotel, get some sleep, because tomorrow morning we head to Porto. And while you're here, make sure to subscribe and see all our other videos, and we'll see you over there. Bye.